In this A Pup Above Fresh Dog Food Review, I'm going to give you the perspective that your pet can't. And not because they can't eat it, but because they can't talk. As much as I love cooking delicious food, what I really love more than anything is eating it. And at the very least, this will be one less meal that I have to cook today. And that's saying something, because being the fitness and nutrition nerd that I am, I eat up to seven meals a day on training days. As an added bonus, I'll finally get to find out if those canned sardines that I eat every day truly taste, as my wife puts it, like dog food. But this isn't just some publicity stunt where I eat dog food on camera. I'm going to show you how a pup above stacks up in terms of quality, convenience, and price, so that you can decide for yourself whether this relatively expensive fresh dog food is the right choice for your fluff ball. And if you do decide to choose a pup above, make sure to use my link in the description below this video to get the best deal that I currently have my hands on. If you're looking for a fresh dog food with traceable, high quality ingredients, and a higher than average serving of delicious proteins, then a pup above might be a great choice for your dog. In terms of quality, I'm going to evaluate a pup above on its appearance, its taste, and its ingredients. Let's start with appearance. So let's take a close up look at these recipes from a pup above. Let's start with the turkey poeya. So that's it up close. And as you can see, there are nice chunks of the ingredients in here. You can see some green peas. You can see some carrots. These are some grains of rice. And there are definitely chunks of meat in there. To be honest, I thought that these would look a little bit nicer based on all of the pictures on the website, but really not too bad. Definitely looks palatable, to say the least. So let's move on now to Corky's Luau. Okay, so these appear to be some green beans, probably sweet potato, and I don't see much in terms of grain here. Again, it looks a bit less impressive than I was expecting from pictures, but I would say at the same time, you know, palatable. Let's move on to the Chicka Chicka Bow Wow. So definitely some rice in here. This is the same thing I believe as was in the pork. I'm guessing it's sweet potato. There's definitely some greens in here, some, you know, chicken protein and everything, but all in all, not too bad. Last but not least, let's take a look at the Texas beef stew. That's probably carrot. There's definitely some green peas in there. You know, definitely nice chunks of beef. Again, not quite what I was expecting based on, you know, what I saw on the website, but I would say overall, I'm not completely off put by the idea of trying this out in just a minute here. So now I'm going to evaluate the smell of each of these recipes to get a sense of how appetizing they are. I'm going to start with the turkey poeya. Hmm, not bad. Definitely smells like food. There's some herbal notes there. I'm gonna guess there's some turmeric in there, maybe some thyme, but the aromas are quite prevalent and I'm definitely able to pick them out with my nose. So let's try the Porky's Luau. All right. This one's a little bit harder. I'm not sure if there are any herbs in there that, that I can pick out. Generally speaking, it smells okay, not anything particularly noteworthy, and I would say that it actually smells like food rather than dog food. So now let's move on to the Chicka Chicka Bow Wow. I would say that this actually smells the least appealing of the three that I've tried so far. Perhaps there's a smell of greens in there and perhaps a little bit of a sour smell in there, not in the way of, you know, spoiled food or anything like that, but I can't really quite put my nose on it. But again, not, this is probably my least favorite smelling of the three so far, but let's move on to the Texas beef stew. So that one smells, I would say, spicy and warm. It reminds me of a chili, which may not be surprising for a Texas beef stew. I smell things like cumin and like paprika. This one definitely smells appetizing. I would say that this is probably the most interesting smelling of the four recipes that I evaluated here. Now here's for the second quality metric, taste. So first I'm going to dig into the turkey poeya. All right. Well, I would say that's not bad at all. I would definitely use more salt, but I think that's by design. And I think I'll find the same thing for all of these recipes because you really don't want to overdo it with salt for your dog. But that tastes pretty darn good. It definitely doesn't taste like dog food. It's even more appetizing than the sardines that I eat on a daily basis. And I love my sardines. Uh, interesting. So far, I'm pleasantly surprised with the turkey poeya. Let's go ahead and move on to Porky's Luau. I would say that one is still very good. I would say a little bit less on the delicious side from the turkey poeya, um, but still very good. Has a bit of a sweetness, probably from the pork, possibly from the sweet potato, but not too bad. I would say overall, there's not much complexity in the flavor there. But once again, not at all what I imagined dog food to taste like. Very thoroughly impressed with that. And if someone served it to me as a meal, I wouldn't be all that disappointed. Of course, not at a five-star restaurant, but that's not what we're talking about here. Next up, let's try the Chicka Chicka Bow Wow. I love that name, by the way. This is the one that I found least pleasant in terms of smell. So let's see how it tastes. 
It's not bad. Um, the flavor is definitely the most bland of the three that I've tried. Nothing is overwhelmingly prominent and nothing really stands out, but it tastes like chicken and definitely not offensive in any way. So again, not bad. I definitely would eat that. All right, let's move on to the fourth and final recipe, the Texas beef stew. As I was smelling, this does have a bit of a, a spiciness to it. Not like a heat spice, but sort of an exotic warmth spice to it. It's not quite what I would expect. Not bad, definitely enjoyable. The texture and the flavor of this food is, is really, really excellent. And if I were receiving this as food, maybe for lunch somewhere or something not overwhelmingly special, I think I would actually be quite happy with the food I'm receiving. The presentation is quite different from something you might expect at a restaurant or something like that. But again, they're packing this up into bags and freezing it. It's meant to be homogenous so that when you're serving portions of it to your dog, they're getting a well-rounded nutrition and not just, you know, a clump of rice one day and a clump of the meat the next day. Overall, I, I am overwhelmingly shocked at how good this dog food tastes. If somebody served this to me and I wasn't expecting a top-notch experience, I really wouldn't be disappointed at all. So excellent job to a pup above for making this dog food taste absolutely great. <laughs> and now for the third quality metric, let's look at the ingredients. The ingredients in a pup above's recipes are actually pretty straightforward, with whole foods that you'd expect in real food, followed by a list of vitamins and minerals to support your dog's health. A pup above calls this their a pup above blend. The ingredients used in each batch are fully traceable, so you can actually see where the ingredients came from by typing in the lock code on the back of your dog food bag on their website, and they'll show you exactly where they sourced it. All the ingredients are human grade and USDA certified. The vegetables are all grown non-GMO and without the use of pesticides, and the meats are all produced without the use of antibiotics or added hormones. The food's prepared in a human grade kitchen in Texas. The kitchen is USDA inspected, and the food is made to USDA standards. The cooked food is flash frozen and tested for pathogens before it's released from their facility. Now let's move on to my second rating criteria, which is convenience. In looking at a pup above's convenience, I'm going to evaluate it on its subscription requirements, its shipping, and its packaging. Another huge benefit of a pup above is that you're not required to be tied to a subscription. Of course you can subscribe and save up to 15%, but that's up to you. On my shipments, I noted that there was a fairly long expiration date. I ordered these in late December 2022, and the earliest expiration date is August 2023. So if you want to go ahead and buy a higher quantity to get an even bigger discount, you can stock up your fridge with confidence. In terms of shipping, a pup above ships to the contiguous 48 states, so you won't be able to get it in Alaska or Hawaii. But for everywhere else in the U.S., transit times range from one to three days, depending on your location. Shipments go up Monday through Wednesday for locations in the one to two day shipping range, and shipments go up Monday and Tuesday for locations in the three day transit region. The shipments arrive in an insulated box packed on dry ice, and they're quite frozen. I'm in the three day transit region, so I'm sure it'll be this cold wherever you are. And then in terms of packaging and serving, a pup above's fresh dog food is frozen in one pound individually wrapped packets. All you have to do is defrost the patty overnight in the fridge, or they say you can thaw it in room temperature water for 30 minutes. Once thawed, the food will keep for up to seven days unopened. And there's a feeding chart right in the bag that'll help you determine how much to feed your dog. So that brings me to my third rating criterion, cost. Well, here's the kicker. A pup above's fresh dog food is undeniably more expensive than some of the other brands when you evaluate it on a dollars per pound basis. While subscriptions from brands like The Farmer's Dog, Ollie, and Pet Plate will run you around four to seven dollars per pound, a three pound multi-pack of a pup above will give you a similar amount of food for about $13 a pound. Of course, you can knock that price down a bit by opting for a seven pound package, and you can knock down even further by opting in for a subscription. But what are you getting for the higher price tag? Well, for starters, a pup above's recipes are packed with over 40% more protein on average than you'll find in recipes from brands like the Farmer's Dog, Ollie, and Pet Plate. And we all know that protein is the most expensive component of food. Just take a look at the prices for meat in the grocery store when compared to vegetables. But more importantly, I thought that dog food was absolutely delicious. And I know that many people out there want only the best for their dog. So sure, it's expensive, but if you're already in the market for fresh dog food, it's really not outrageous. And if you want to get access to the best discount that I currently have my hands on, make sure to click on my link in the description below this video. I'll always be updating that with the best deal I have access to. If you're interested in learning more about fresh dog food, make sure to stay tuned right here on this channel.